Good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome to um, Midday Prayer on this Thursday the 7th of January. Um, I'm just waiting to see if uh, other people may be joining me. I can see that somebody's joined, that's great. As usual, if you can put your comments um, in the chat that would be really helpful so that I know that um, I'm not on my own and really good if uh, you can put comments, prayer requests, uh, all that kind of thing into the comments then we can have a conversation together this um, lunchtime. Welcome to Kim and Lorraine and Shirley, it's good to have you with us. I know there are others as well but uh, those ones have come up straight away. Uh, there we are, that sound tells me my phone has caught up with the fact that we're live and then I'll have the comments here in front of me and I'll be able to see the comments that you're making. Uh, welcome to you Dave and Kim. Well I wonder how you are feeling um, today. Uh, I think quite a lot of people have expressed to me the, the phrase January blues and it's an extraordinary January for us, isn't it? Many Januaries, um, people can feel a little bit down, uh, but this January more than ever with uh, lockdown and so forth can make us feel extra low. So we can reflect a little bit on that and how we can help one another. And as Kim has indicated there, how good to be praying today for the United States, for the government there, those extraordinary scenes we witnessed yesterday Let's be bringing that whole situation uh, um, to God. Um, praying for the American people and for a peaceful transition of power. This is what we prayed often uh, through November, through the election time. Um, but also that has an influence on the rest of the world. And really important for all of us that um, things continue peacefully in the United States and are resolved well and real wisdom for all those involved in decision making. So let's be praying for the United States. Let's be praying as well as we come to prayer later in our service for our health service. I think that's uh, lots, um, lots of reports indicate that's going to be coming under huge strain, is under huge strain and will be coming under huge strain in the coming days. Uh, let's be praying for our schools and teachers and let's be praying for one another and you may well have other um, things that you would like to pray for we'll put them in the chat and then we can all be praying together um, yes and, and reflecting on I don't know how you're feeling um, I'm um, uh, feeling it a little bit uh, challenged to to um, confess to feeling a little bit of the January blues as we come back and uh, assessing the different challenges we face and so it's supporting one another and praying for one another uh, for wisdom and let's be loving and caring for one another in the days and weeks ahead. Um, there's some lovely words from Psalm 30 uh, which say weeping may remain for a night but joy comes in the morning and I think we can hold on to two things at once. On the one hand, I think we probably do face some challenging days ahead and weeks ahead, and yet with news of a vaccine and um, there's promise of better to come and an end, um, though it may be some way off, the beginning of an end to the challenge we're living through. So let's be reflecting on that. We're going to be looking at Psalm 119. We've almost finished work, working our way through it. We're going to be looking at some verses from near the end of Psalm 119. And we're going to be looking at Psalm 134, a short psalm. And then we're going to look at Matthew chapter 2 and read a little bit after Epiphany, the uh, next bit of the story, if you like, um, from Matthew chapter 2. So do have your Bible ready and open. So grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I invite you to respond and also with you. And let's remind one another, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And 
from a weather point of view, it's beautiful sunshine, a beautiful crisp wintry day, and that can remind us of the beauty of the world God has given us, and that can be a source for our joy. Let's, um, as we come to praise, let's use the psalm for praise, and we're going to have a look at Psalm 119, and we've got to verse 153. We've been working our way steadily through this ever since we first got to Psalm 119, sometime before Christmas, and we've taken it in chunks and we've nearly made our way all the way through it. So let's find verse 153. The psalmist says to God, Look on my suffering and deliver me, for I've not forgotten your law. Defend my cause and redeem me, Preserve my life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek out your decrees. Your compassion, Lord, is great. Preserve my life according to your laws. Many are the foes who persecute me, but I have not turned from your statutes. I look on the faithless with loathing, for they do not obey your word. See how I love your precepts. Preserve my life, Lord, in accordance with your love. All your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. Rulers persecute me without cause, but my heart trembles at your word. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. I hate and detest falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. I wait for your salvation, Lord. I follow your commands. I obey your statutes, for I love them greatly. I obey your precepts and your statutes, for all my ways are known to you. There are um, words, the word salvation comes up several times in those, uh, those verses. The psalmist says, uh, please, God, deliver me. Look on me in my suffering and deliver me. I wonder how you're feeling this morning, whether you're crying out, Lord, please deliver us from these difficult times we're living in. Please deliver us from COVID. Um, and then this word salvation comes. And I think we've tended in uh, recent years, perhaps, sometimes I have been quite constricted in my thoughts of salvation maybe we think of being saved as sort of jumping on a life raft and being rescued and certainly that has that that the word salvation contains that feeling of us being rescued but it's much deeper than that i feel as i read scripture that there's lots of other words connected with this word that's translated as salvation which is to do with wholeness and healing and restoration um, it's not connected with the word salve, but I often think of that and, and think about a salve that you put on a wound to bring healing. And so when the psalmist says that in his relationship with God, he finds salvation, it's not just about God saving him from difficulty. I think it's deeper than that. I think it's about God restoring, redeeming, making whole, healing which may be the work of a lifetime. And so when it says in the verse 155 that salvation is far from the wicked, I think part of that, what I was reflecting on is it is, and as he continues that theme, as he's all the way through of turning to God's law, turning to the words of scripture, turning to God's sayings and teachings, seeking to live by them, and, and more than seeking to live by them, to encounter a relationship with God in his word, in that relationship we have with God, as we read his word and follow his teachings, so we discover salvation. There is a rescue involved in that, a rescue from our past life, a rescue from the wrong things we've done, a rescue from the consequences of sin. But more than that, there is ongoing healing, a balm, a salve for our souls, an ongoing healing that continues through our lives. And so what we have in the promise of God uh, is healing, salvation. Uh, the psalmist there says, your compassion is great. I rejoice in your promise.
Let's have a read of Psalm 134, a very brief psalm. Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who is the maker of heaven and earth. So we come to praise God. I've been reflecting recently on the difference between happiness and joy. In the debate on climate change, um, there's often a phrase used that there's a difference between weather and climate. The um, United Kingdom has a temperate climate. The Gulf Stream flows up the side, we're surrounded by water, and we have a temperate climate. It's uh, not too extreme, and there's many good things about that. We sometimes have bitterly cold days, and we sometimes have very hot days. We sometimes have miserable drizzly days, and sometimes beautiful um, sunny days like today. We sometimes have long bitter winters, and sometimes we have mild winters. What, that's weather. Weather is different from climate. And if you like, happiness is like weather. We can have good days and bad days. But joy is like the climate. What is our joy? Or what can our joy be based upon? Well, here are some things our joy can be based upon. Our joy can be based upon the fact that we are children of God. That he loved us so much that he left his heaven. That he came and lived amongst us as Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. That for you and for me, he stretched out his arms on a cross in order to deal with our wrongs and the way we'd messed up. In order to enter into our sorrows and to carry them for us, to win for us eternal life. Our joy can be based in that promise that Jesus is the resurrection and the life and that he promises life eternal to those who trust in him. Those are reasons for joy and we can hold on. That's the climate we live in as children of God. He loves us. Nothing can separate us from his love, not even death itself. We have life in all eternity. That's the climate. Within that context, we may have bad weather sometimes. We'll have some drizzly days and some dark days. And maybe uh, 2020 and the beginning of 2021 has been like, um, for many people, a, a long, dark, bitter winter. And so our happiness can take a battering. But underneath that happiness, there are reasons for joy. And perhaps the invitation of the psalmist is to, as we come to praise God and to worship him, worship him, to reflect on the reasons that we have for joy and that that might also uh, inform and help us in our daily happiness um, as we seek to support and love one another through this difficult time. So let's pause and thank God for the reasons for joy. Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, says the psalmist. Lord God, we praise you for salvation, for healing, for your ministry to us. That as we walk with you and know you, as we know your love for us, as we encounter your daily forgiveness, your daily renewal of our lives, as we know our identity as children of God, so we may encounter enduring joy in that relationship. Lord, we praise you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you in this epiphany season for the reminder that you left your heaven. You came and lived amongst us in Jesus Christ as God with us. You put aside might and power and took on vulnerability. Lord, we praise you for your goodness. And we praise you today in the beauty of this day, in the beauty of the weather around us. That reminds us of the beauty of the creation you have given us to enjoy. This beautiful pearl of a planet that we live on. Lord God, on days when um, it's difficult to be happy, would you remind us of the deep joy of being your children and help us to worship you and praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's have a look at Matthew chapter 2. It's good to be joined. I can see uh, the names on the screen of some people 
from the United States as well and um, to uh, remind them that um, they're very much in our prayers at the moment and we will come to pray specifically for that situation in a moment. But let's read these words from Matthew chapter 2 uh, verses 13 to 18. And so the wise men, the Magi, have just opened their treasures. They've been overjoyed on coming to the house where Jesus is. They've been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. And they've returned by another route. And so we come to verse 13. When they'd gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod realised that he'd been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled, a voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. A really sad and difficult reading in many ways and I'm just so struck by how we go from verse 11 where they, they're overjoyed or verse 10 they're overjoyed the magi and then the bowing down and the worshipping and the opening of their treasures this joy uh, at the um, in verses 10 11 and 12 and then to this really sad brutal um, episode where Herod orders the murder of these children and the grief and desolation. Uh, so many questions come out of that. Um, it, in, it interests me. It's challenging, encouraging, challenging, difficult, reflective of how joy is bound up with grief, how God is working out his plan of salvation. He has come himself in the person of Jesus, entered our world in this infant, and yet he doesn't make the path smooth. He doesn't work out this path smoothly. Woven into, there's good news. The child, the baby Jesus is, is rescued. And yet many die uh, in the process. There's um, grief um, for those other families and mothers as Herod brutally uh, tries to... Um, uh, overcome God's plan which always is bound to failure and isn't it interesting all the way through Herod does not want a descendant of David born to be Messiah because it threatens his illegitimate rule on the throne and he tries to overcome God's plan himself uh, by taking action um, to defeat God's plan and of course uh, by that root lies destruction and evil and suffering and he inflicts that suffering his desire to cling on to his throne his power leads to so much suffering for others perhaps that um, has echoes for us in modern day times but this tragedy that's woven into the story and yet the other side of that is that God is weaving beauty and goodness and a plan of salvation in the midst of this human suffering and pain that uh, the one who was born to be the redeemer is come to save us uh, god is weaving his plan through all of this um, the bible is very real about the grief and the sadness um, and the reality of it in human life and yet god coming is emmanuel god with us and ultimately to bring salvation and redemption. So, um, uh, some difficult words, and yet God working out his plan in the midst of it. 
another thing I reflect on at the beginning of Matthew's Gospel is how many um, unexpected reversals there are. The wise men come from a country which was traditionally the enemies of the Jewish people. They come from Assyria and Babylonia. Um, Jesus is, escapes to Egypt. Egypt was the place that um, the Israelites once escaped from out of slavery. And yet um, Jesus, the embodiment of the Jewish people in, in um, Matthew's thinking, the new Israel, he escapes to Egypt. He finds um, a safe place in Egypt. And then later on, Jesus will return from Egypt to save his people back in um, Israel, who are not free, but under this tyrant Herod, and also under the rule of the Romans, but also under the rule of um, those who do not live out God's love uh, in the person of some of the more restricted Pharisees and teachers of the law. So lots and lots of reversals um, in those verses. Let's pray together. Kim has already reminded us that we can be praying for the United States and let's definitely do that. Let's also be praying for our health service. I think that in the coming days we're told that there's going to be great pressure. So let's pray for that situation. Let's pray um, uh, for uh, our doctors and nurses and all who work in the health service. Um, it's good to welcome you, Kimberly, from the United States, and we'll be praying for um, the United States. Let's be praying for our teachers, and um, let's also be praying for those who we know who are unwell. I'm conscious of people we know who have COVID or other illnesses. Um, let's pray for them and any who grieve at this time. And let's be praying for each other. But let's begin by um, praying for the United States. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reminder in our reading today that even in difficulty and tragedy and sadness, you are working out your purposes. Lord God, we thank you that you had a plan of salvation and that in the ugliness of what was happening in Bethlehem as Herod uh, murderously took out his frustration on those um, families. Lord, that you were weaving good from evil and that the Saviour was there, God with us. Lord, we lift you the difficult situation in the United States, the uh, difficult scenes yesterday, the person who lost their life, the people who lost their lives, those who were injured. And Lord, we pray uh, for the United States in the coming days. Lord, that there would be a peaceful transition to a new presidency. Lord, we pray for all decision makers who are involved in that. That they might take wise and good decisions. Lord, we pray for Donald Trump and his supporters. Those who were uh, so... Um, active yesterday. Lord, we ask that they may step back from actions that would continue to jeopardise the peace of that country. Lord, we pray for Vice President Pence, for all senators and Congress um, men and women. Lord, if they have decisions to make in the next two weeks, that you would give them great wisdom. Lord, we pray for the safe charting of a course. And Lord, we pray above all for the healing of divisions in that country across divides. 
And Lord, as we pray for that, we pray for Christian people. Lord, we ask that they might lead the way in loving neighbours, in reaching out to people they have thought of as enemies and loving their enemies. And Lord, we pray for a true walking of the way of Jesus, especially amongst the churches and Christian leaders and amongst Christian people in that land, that they might lead the way to healing that word of salvation. So Lord, we ask your blessing on the United States in the days and weeks ahead acknowledging the importance of this powerful nation in our world its importance and potential for good and also therefore for bad if things go wrong so Lord we lift all of that situation to you in Jesus name Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Lord God, we bring to you now the situation in our own country with COVID. And Lord, we recognise that many of our hospitals are um, struggling at the moment. Lord, we thank you for all who work in frontline services whether it be driving buses or collecting refuse or working on a supermarket till or working in wards full of people who are poorly with COVID, caring for them and therefore putting oneself in the way of danger. Lord, we thank you for all who serve us in those ways. And we pray now for our National Health Service. In a moment of quiet, we lift to God um, anybody known to us who, is, who works in the health service. Nurses, doctors, support staff, GPs. Name those known to you. Lord, we pray for your blessing on them. We ask for wisdom for decision makers in hospitals. Lord, we ask that our hospitals don't become um, overwhelmed. We pray that um, really good decisions will be made. And would you help us all to be wise in our own behaviours so that we can minimise the risk of infection and minimise the risk of filling up our hospitals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for um, all who uh, work in our schools, who've had their plans suddenly changed with this new lockdown. And for parents too, grappling again with homeschooling. Lord, would you uh, bless our head teachers. We remember in our own area, our church school, Aldor Primary School, our other church school, Glapthorne Primary School, the other schools in our town, Prince William School and Laxton Junior and Aldor School. 
again we name before God those known to us who are teachers and pray for them now. And parents grappling again with homeschooling. And children and young people for whom plans have changed. Exams put on hold. Bring your peace and help us to support one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for all those too who um, are affected by this lockdown, particularly those who are um, feeling um, lonely at this time and isolated again. Heavenly Father, we bring to you all who um, feel isolated and alone. Those unable to connect online as we're doing now. Those who long for um, some physical contact. The presence of a friend. The hug of a family member. Lord, would you Help us to continue to be family for each other, reaching out to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are unwell at this time. Those with COVID and fearful. Those unable to visit friends and family in hospital because of COVID. Those otherwise unwell whose treatment has been changed. And those who are grieving. In a moment of quiet, we'll name before God those known to each one of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then let's pray for each other. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge for some of us the challenge of this January. For those who feel down. Lord, we pray that we would discover joy in our relationship with you. As we commit to spending time with you, may you remind us each day of your love for us, our identity as your children. May we find healing, salvation in our identity as your children. And Lord, as members of Brothers and sisters, children of the same Heavenly Father, would you help us to care for each other and to support one another through this time? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, let's finally give thanks uh, because it is such good news that there is a vaccine. Let's give thanks for the skill of all those who have worked on it and uh, let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those words from the psalm that though there may be weeping in the night, joy comes in the morning. Lord, we acknowledge that COVID has felt for many like a long night time. But we thank you for the glimmers of dawn on the horizon, for all who worked so hard on a vaccine, for the skill they apply to it. Lord we pray for its rollout now, not only in this country but across the world, especially remembering those in the poorest nations of the earth. 
Lord, we acknowledge there's a long way to go, but we thank you for the hope this gives us and for this development. Lord, would you bless all those who continue to work on vaccines and all who are working to administer them and make decisions about how that happens. Lord, would you give wisdom to all decision makers as we give you thanks for the skill of all who have developed this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shall we pray the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's been really good to gather together this lunchtime. Thank you for um, joining me. Thank you for uh, putting those comments in the uh, in the chat. That was really helpful. And. Um, we'll be together again for midday prayers next week, um, Tuesday with Martin and Carita, I should think. Next Wednesday will be refreshed from St Peter's and next Thursday Annabelle leading midday prayers. Um, for St Peter's Church, we continue to be online through this next lockdown. We're really concentrating on our online services again. Uh, there'll be our Sunday morning live as usual um, this Sunday morning on Facebook and YouTube. And also um, there'll be other opportunities, maybe via Zoom in the coming days and weeks to continue to gather together. And I know that uh, Arundel Baptist Church will be um, having their worship. In a couple of weeks time, it is the, um, the pr week of prayer for Christian unity. And uh, we're in conversations, Arundel Baptist Church and us, about how we might do a joint service to mark that. So do keep um, your eyes out for that. So lovely to join with you today. Shall we finish by um, saying the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. See you soon.